being so dramatic. It's <laughs> like a reflection of how ridiculously small my life is. Can you feel the procrastination pouring off of me? Probably. Oh, I'm totally dead wrong. What a satisfying rip though, right? Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to a little bit of a spontaneous weekend vlog because I don't plan anything. <laughs> so again, just in the mood, thought I would give it a go. I am back with one of those weekends where I simultaneously have a ton to do, but yet have no specific places to be, commitments, anything other than what I wanna make of this weekend. So I thought it might be a good time to catch up, read some books, get some stuff done, take you guys along for the ride. So no plan, no promises <laughs> of what's gonna happen, but it is the end of the workday on Friday, TGIF, and I am going to do the thing, which you know I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go for a walk. It is hot out. I don't know how long I'm gonna last. We are having a little bit of a summery spike. It's May, I know, shut up, shut up. It's New York, it's May, it should be warm, but um, we'll see how long my delicate <laughs> heat sensitive body lasts outside. But I need to stretch my legs. I need some vitamin D. I need some air. So that's what we're going to do. So just to give you guys a baseline of where I'm at with my reading, I am reading the e-arc of I Didn't Do It by Jamie Lynn Hendricks. That comes out on May 25th, I want to say. Details, of course, will always be down below. It is set at Murderpalooza, which is a fictionalized version of Thriller Fest, which I automatically just love. We are following a group of writers and one of the writers who was up for the coveted award of the weekend is murdered. And then the other group of writers who are our main characters find themselves simultaneously being threatened and drawn into this murder mystery but who better to solve a crime than people who write it for a living. So absolutely loving that. You guys know I read her book. I always get the title wrong because there's a US edition and there's a UK edition. The US name is It Could Be Anyone. The UK edition is Her Husband's Murder. Again, I will fact check that down below. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of hers. Really, really enjoy it. So I'm really loving that. And then I'm listening to The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. So I read One of Us is Dead last year. And then last month, if you caught my wrap up, if you didn't, you know I'm going to link it for you. I read You Shouldn't Have Come Here. And now I'm reading The Perfect Marriage, which is her second book. And I feel like it's the one that had like a ton of hype around it. So we'll, we'll see what happens on the hype train, but I'm also, I'm like 60% of the way into it. So it's a super compulsive read. It's definitely like going quickly. I want to know what's going to happen next. And kind of the tagline on this one is his mistress is murdered. His wife is his own only hope <laughs> not to get all Star Wars on you. I obviously don't have the book in front of me, so I'm winging that a little bit, but his wife is a criminal defense attorney. And when his mistress is murdered, that's who he turns to for help. So we are unraveling that mystery. I'm really curious. I don't know what to think of where we're going in that book, but I'm totally down for the ride. It's definitely dark and messed up. And you know me. That's just, that's, that's just what's working for me. So I'm going to walk. I've got a little bit of book mail coming today, which I will show you guys after I go grab it. So let's get this vlog start it. Hi, post walk. I'm guessing that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not take my makeup off before I went out. I just slapped some sunscreen on. But uh, I would say it was warmer than I thought it was going to be. But no, it was actually as hot as I thought it was going to be. But anyway, we're just, we're going to go with this and it's going to be totally fine. So I know it's kind of shadowy, but it's worse without the hat on <laughs> in terms of the sweat bombs. So anyway, it was crazy busy out. Like I know it's Friday, but I felt like cars, dogs, kids, landscaping, like just, I, I like tried to like put my camera up a couple of times and it just, there was like way too much that I needed to pay attention to. So anyway, 
good walk. Glad I went out. Definitely hot. Definitely excited to be home, inside, cool, all the things. So have a little bit of packages to go through. So anyway, yeah, we're going to do that. So I did open this one first. So I did a little me book shopping. These are all books that I bought. So the first one I am so stinking excited about. I mean, in all fairness, I'm excited about all of them, but good old Pango, the golden spoon. So what's even more fun about this, so I'm not gonna like totally shout out, but it's from Hannah. Hannah, you know who you are. So I have been itching to read this book for, like since before it came out. And I've been eyeing it and eyeing it and debating it and eyeing it. And then I was talking to Lindsay and she was like, oh my God, I'm reading it right now. And she was like, I found it on Pango. She's like, I feel like I really lucked out. So I had been stalking Pango for like a week. And then this popped up, like it said it was like posted four hours ago. And I was like, poof, done. And then Hannah sent me the sweetest message that she watches me. So, so funny. The world is way too small, which I'm not mad about, but I'm super excited. So thanks Hannah for posting it. And I'm excited to read this book and it's beautiful. And I've heard so many great things about it. So I'm stoked for this book. Great British Bake Off meets Clue, I feel like is how this one is pitched. So I also have an embarrassing pile of books over here because I need to film a book haul this weekend. So book number two, I'm gonna apologize in advance if this is gonna make some noise, I'll like quiet it. What a satisfying rip though, right? So, you know, I've been on my pre-order game lately and here's an, I don't even know where to put the garbage. Here's another thing that I'm not at all mad about, so I've been pre-ordering books for a little bit, but I got a shipping notice the other day that my pre-order had shipped. And I was like, I didn't buy anything that's coming out on Tuesday. So the new Jamie Lynn Hendricks book, I didn't do it, which comes out on the 26th, is here now. So hi, not mad about it, totally excited about it. This is the book that I'm currently reading the e -arc of on my iPad. And I'm so excited to have the physical book because for one, and yes, I inspect it left, right, and center. <laughs> I'm also always like, there's no secret stuff on it. Sometimes there's like cool stuff on the cover. I'm of course like tabbing and highlighting the ebook, but I know you guys who get e -arcs know this, like they're, they can be a little bit wonky sometimes in terms of formatting. And that always just gives me like a little bit of a, I don't know. It's a little bit tricky sometimes when you're reading them. But anyway, I've been tabbing them and stuff, so now I can read the final copy, which is so exciting. And I'm probably like just about halfway into this. I'm not even kidding. I just opened up <laughs> to chapter 26, which is where I am. I'm like reading this and I'm like, Friday, 4, 15 p.m., Davis. Oh my gosh, that's exactly where I am. So I'm so excited to have this. I love... I feel like normally, so I bought this at Barnes and Noble. They did their like 25 off pre-order sale. They've done it several times, but I bought this the last time they did that. And I have not pre-ordered from Barnes and Noble until recently. And I pre-ordered, you're gonna get like a little bit of a sneak peek. My good friend Ashley Winstead. This arrived on Tuesday, which is what I'm used to. I'm not used to getting a book like a week, two weeks before it comes, a week and a half before it comes out. Not bad, super excited. Writer's conference, and then this is what I'm planning to read next. So you guys know me, I don't make a TBR, but here we are. Other books over here. And then I also picked up, so I read the E-Arc, <laughs> which has been like so blessed lately, of the new Carly Fortune book. And then it was also a Libro FM, I should be careful with my X-Acto knife. ALC, Libro FM ALC. So I just finished reading that. I did a combination of physically reading it and listening to it and I loved it. You guys know I loved Every Summer After and I was so excited for Meet Me at the Lake. So I picked up a finished copy of it. This had been on my plan to get, but since I had the other ones, I was like, well, let me read them first and then I'll just pick it up when I have a chance. And this is about Fern and Will. And 10 years ago they met sort of one day randomly in Toronto, Fern works at a coffee shop, Will was painting a mural, coffee shop was closed for the day and baby, basically, baby, <laughs> baby girl, back to the siesta key, 
basically Fern had to babysit Will, like just sort of like make sure he had what he needed, watch the shop, that kind of a thing. And then they wind up spending like 24 hours together in Toronto. He's leaving the next morning and she was leaving the next week. She had finished college and she was going back home. So they spend one memorable day together 10 years ago, and then they wind up meeting 10 years later. So there's a lot of other stuff going on in it, obviously. I had talked about how this reminded me of Before Sunrise with Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, where they meet on a train. I feel like I said they go to Austria when I filmed that video. They go to Vienna and they get off the train together, spend one day together and make a pact to meet later on. So this does have a little bit of those vibes, but we're spending probably 50-50 time past and present. So I will say that Will is definitely a contender for one of my new favorite book boyfriends, although I also hear that Logan is gonna give Ben Laterman from Fool Me Once a run for his money. So I'm stacking up the book boyfriends here. But I really enjoyed this book. I definitely need to have it on my shelf. It needs to live next to Every Summer After. And it was really good. And I have to say, I know I've said this before, but a lot of authors have been doing reader's guide and author's notes at the end of their book. And there was something in this book that gets revealed later on in the book. And as I was reading it, I was kind of like, oh, I wish they would have revealed this sooner because I feel like it could have made for interesting conversation and more interesting plot points and like very interesting discussions could have taken place with the characters. And then in Carly Fortune's afterward, where she talks about her writing of the book and she explains, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about it, but she explains the reveal and what it is and sort of why she did it the way she did. And it gave it so much more context and had it make sense, which made me love it in a way I didn't the first time reading through it because now I feel like, oh, I understand what she was doing and I have a different appreciation for it. And very similar to JT Ellison in It's One of Us and Stacey Willingham did it with um, All These Dangerous Places. And I really just am enjoying, you know me, I love the behind the curtain with the writers and why they do what they do and the choices they make and how books are written and where their ideas come from. And I just found it to be really powerful and impactful. So it was a really good book. There's definitely a study of grief in this. We know out of the gate that Fern's mom has passed away and we're really seeing her deal with a lot of that as well. So it's a really well done book. I very much enjoy it. It's very different from Every Summer After. So if Every Summer After maybe didn't totally work for you or maybe it didn't quite grab your, like you weren't like, engaged, like interested in it to pick it up, this is a different story, obviously. <laughs> she didn't write the same story twice, but really engaging characters, really engaging writing, but um, not the same storyline, obviously, because who wants to read somebody write the same book twice. Stop talking. And then I just picked up a blank notebook. So I don't know if anybody has preferred notebooks. This <laughs> So it's just the cover feels like, um, like a faux suede. I can see it's like kind of bent from the box, but it's fine. It's just a plain lined notebook. It's got a, it's like a soft cover. I live for a spiral notebook and this was like half off. So I just picked up a new one because I really love them. And I like to use them when I'm writing, which I feel like we can dig into tomorrow because that's a conversation in and of itself. And that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. So anyway, I'm gonna get at it and maybe take a breath. It's gonna be a good weekend, you guys. It's gonna be a good weekend. Happy Saturday, out and about, trying to get a jump on the day, trying to beat the crowds, trying to beat the heat. But yes, I'm so happy it's the weekend. I a thousand percent have one of those mornings where I woke up and I thought it was a work day and I got all confused and I was trying to do math in my head and then I figured out I was wrong and I was wrong in a good way. So I'm very happy it's the weekend. Again, not that I have anything exciting happening, just happy to not be working. So. On that note, I'm just going to enjoy my audiobook. Still listening to Geneva Rose, The Perfect Marriage. I figured out one thing, feeling proud of myself. I'm suspect about something else, which I think we're going to find out about. And I'm just having a fun time with it. So, on that note, let's get to it. Hello 
know from the car. I'm having a very strange deja vu down to the fact that I'm fairly certain I have done this looking like this before. <laughs> it's just a testament to the fact that I just wear the same stuff all the time, which is fine. It's normal. That's life. Um, oh my gosh. I Everything's fine. I had like a super productive morning. I don't know if this happens with other people. Like you jumpstart your day with something positive. Going for a walk, got the energy flowing, and I just came home and was like crushing stuff. Three loads of laundry were done. Just like picking up, cleaning up. I am almost done with The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. I'm not even kidding. I had to just be like, there's 25 minutes left in this book. I have to go. I cannot continue to sit here or like move around and do stuff and listen to this book. But like, I got to get out of the house. So it's like noontime-ish. All the, the clocks and stuff are off. Um, I had to run to CVS to pick up a prescription. <laughs> I am traumatized. As someone who used to work at CVS, I a thousand percent get the fact that like it's a crazy town sometimes, but usually I go like after work and it's like less crazy town. Saturday at noon, not the time to go, but I had to pick up my migraine prescription because you can't be without. Every spot in the parking lot was taken. I got the last one and it was like it was like people at an amusement park, like, well, hey, hey, gang, hey, fam, <laughs> let's go to CVS for the day. Oh, my God. So in and out unscathed, but um, I'm definitely going to take a lap around Barnes & Noble <laughs> just to calm my mind. I really kind of want one of those, like, cold drinks, but I'm going to go take a look at some pillows. I've been desperately wanting some new throw pillows for the bed and I just kind of want to take a look and then I might go grab a couple I feel like I could get through a couple days without going to the supermarket like I've got food at home honestly kind of just want to go get an avocado <laughs> because I just love them um and my least favorite thing about the avocado is it looks fine it feels fine it ripens fine and then you open it and it's like brown as all get out and I had to toss it. So I realized my world will keep turning without an avocado, but you know, <laughs> it's like a reflection of how ridiculously small my life is. All right. So I'm going to go <laughs> get out of the car because it's getting hot. <laughs> Okay, we're back. That was entirely more successful than it needed to be. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Look what I found. I found an oversized paperback, I feel like proportion against my head, of Distress Signals by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is her debut. I don't have this one and I don't own Rewind and I haven't read those and I also haven't read The Liar's Girl. So those are her first three books and she's a massive favorite author of mine so I need to read more of her books. I've never seen like this oversized paperback before. They also had it at 56 days but I already own that so that was just oh sorry guys that was a complete unexpected surprise and I was all over it and I was all over this. But the strawberries get caught. Um, yeah so Strawberry Refresher with Lemonade on top. A book that I wasn't even looking for, which I feel like, I don't know. I feel like maybe the tide is turning. It's been a rough kind of a stretch. Again, in the grand scheme, things are fine, but like, it's just been a tough stretch. So I'm going to go press my luck and buy an avocado across the street at the supermarket. <laughs> But you would have seen, I did a little quick browse in West Elm. That's my local shop. And I originally thought I wanted like dark brown, like chocolate brown throw pillows. So I have some white ones and I just wanted like a little something, but just nothing, nothing cuckoo. But then I saw that bed that had like those gray green pillows, which I really liked, but I'm going to do some research. So... 
what I really want is pillow covers for the pillows I already have. I don't want to be buying all new stuff. I just want to recover the pillows I already have. So anyway, I just like to walk around a little bit and also fantasize about getting one of those giant L-shaped couches someday. 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 I need to move first. Um, but a whole lot of things need to fall into place before that happens. So anyway, all right. I'm on the hunt for an avocado. So wish me luck. <laughs> I've lost my mind. All right. Bye. Okay, I'm home. That was crazy. So another reason I need to get a new tripod, where I feel like I maybe talked about this in the vlog that never happened. Did I mention that I filmed a vlog like two weekends ago when it was pouring rain and then it just sort of fizzled and I never put it up? <laughs> there you go. I'm having problems with my tripod and also it is at its max capacity. I'm 5'9". I'm not a giant, but I would like one that goes taller. So anyway, The shopping was like the easiest part. The food shopping was the easiest part. I know everybody's worried. Got the avocados. I got two. I was feeling crazy. Yogurt was on sale. So I got yogurt. And does anybody else live for these Yasso? They were also on sale. <laughs> Greek frozen yogurt bars. These are my favorite thing ever. The mint is my favorite, but they didn't have mint. So I settled, by which I mean I did not settle at all, for chocolate fudge. I didn't even go in for that. I went in for avocados. And look at me, coming out with my freezer's over stuff. Did I mention yogurt was on sale? So anyway, there you go. Successful shopping trip. Now I'm hungry as all get out. So I'm gonna make myself some lunch. I'm gonna listen to the end of Geneva Rose while I make my lunch and then we'll see what happens. So I know that nobody cares, but in the interest of vlogging what's really happening, the Mets are playing at four o'clock today. It's been a rough start to the season, but you don't grow up a Mets fan and then live in Boston and not, I don't wanna say you used to, your team not crushing it every day, but this is not new territory for me to be tromping through. I just don't enjoy the territory. But anyway, we won last night, so that was good. So I'm going to do something between now and later. How about that? Tomorrow's gonna be a filming day. So I have some prep to do for that. Glad I did not film. Not that I would have filmed this morning, but anyway, since I got a new book. One more for the book haul that you guys are gonna see on top of the books that you saw yesterday that I got. But I'm also like 200 pages into the Jamie Lynn Hendricks book that I showed you guys yesterday because I already had the e-arc of it. So I'm very much enjoying that. I need to figure out what I want to listen to next, but that's a story for later. All right, I need to eat because hangry Audrey isn't fun for anybody. Okay, let's try it again. Third time. We're back. The <laughs> There's a rain delay in baseball. Sometimes I sit and watch, sometimes I have it on in the background. But anyway, I was like looking forward to this as like a break for things, but do you ever feel like the universe is like, girl, we're gonna give it a rain delay? They're in DC today to force you to do the to-do list that you've been ignoring. Not that I've been ignoring it, but it's just, I haven't been doing it. It's there, I see it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm just walking by it. <laughs> then I glanced at it. I was like, let me cross off a bunch of stuff. I had such a productive day. I crossed off like three things, but still I did a ton today. So anyway, okay, let me get to, let me get to some book stuff. I did finish listening to The Perfect Marriage while I was making lunch. I feel so mixed up on time today because I was, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I just ate lunch really late. So I, I very much enjoyed it. I know I told you guys what it's about in concept. His mistress is dead. His wife is his only hope. So Adam Morgan's mistress is found murdered, stabbed a extreme number of times in the lake house he shares with his wife. His wife was at their home in DC at the time. This is how the book opens. She is a criminal defense attorney and she winds up defending him in the murder trial. So that's the core of this book. I was gonna say that's the core of this case. That's the core of this book. I have been, I feel like in a situation lately where so many books that I've read, I feel like that's all I can even say. I don't even like, I don't even know how I'm gonna review this book. You guys are gonna get like a bumbly preview of it right now. I don't know how to talk about this book without talking about stuff, which I'm not gonna do, because I feel like 
so many of my feelings are tied up in plot points and characters and like talking about much of anything. Not that I'm going to give anything away, but I also, again, like I feel like some books, it's great to go into it just not knowing. So we get dual POVs, we get Mor we get Morgan. Their last name is Morgan. <laughs> I keep wanting to call Sarah Morgan. Morgan. It's like a first name. Sarah Morgan and Adam Morgan. So we get both of their POVs in this book. I like how it was done. I like how a lot of the chapters like one person's chapter would end and how another one would start like that kind of a thing. It definitely kept me on my toes. So there was one thing I was suspicious about that I was rightly right to be suspicious about. There was something else I was suspicious about that I wound that wound up not being a thing, which is totally fine. But like I really enjoyed it. I definitely have I have questions, Emily Baker. I have some questions about the characters. And I feel like this is also where I fall into that category of why is this person doing the things they are doing? But it ultimately makes sense and serves the story. But it also feels like characters should be smarter. But how do you know what you would do if you weren't in these situations? And then there's also a part of me that's like, okay, I can understand that you're not making the best choices ever, but you think you're making the best choice for you. And it probably is the best choice for them in the moment in their head. It's the, the villain is the hero of their own story. Every villain is the hero of their own story. So I really did enjoy it. I like her writing. She's definitely on the dark and messed up side. But what I really find interesting, so I now have read, which I know I said this yesterday, I've read this, I read... One of Us is Dead, which is the book she wrote after this. And then I recently read You Shouldn't Have Come Here, which is her new book, which just came out. This to me feels closer to You Shouldn't Have Come Here. One of Us is Dead feels like a very different book to me. I loved it. And I feel like this is more on par with You Shouldn't Have Come Here and more of like a wild ride of a book. And then I haven't read her first book yet, but now of course I'm like a thousand percent curious. I think it's the girl I used to be. Is that what it's called? Don't you just get real ticked when the beginning of the book doesn't have a list of all of the author's books? I know this is not her first book. Dang it. I'll put it down below. I think it's the girl I used to be. Oh, I'm totally dead wrong. The Perfect Marriage is her debut. I thought this was her second book. Okay, I'll still put the, the book I'm thinking about over here. And... I feel like I might just want to listen to that. I know my library has it, so I feel like I might just want to listen to that and <laughs> complete all of her books and find out. So anyway, I did enjoy it. I just feel like I can't say anything about it. When I have a minute, we can all collectively roll an eye. I'll post a review on Goodreads and I will blind it with spoilers. So if anybody's read it, you can check that out and see my spoilers. No, <laughs> no time commitment when that's going to go up. I'm super behind on Goodreads. So other than that, I also realized, so I talked about distress signals super quickly in my car today, but I didn't actually tell you guys what it was about. This is heavy. Like this book is weighty and I'm still like super jazzed about, not about the siren. I mean, if I had a siren, I would probably beep it too. Okay, 422 pages. So it's big, but I don't know, for like a paperback, it feels really heavy. So the blurb on this, this is the day Adam Dunn's girlfriend, Sarah. Are we really Adam and Sarah again? Adam and Sarah, Adam and Sarah. Just, that's weird. That's weird. Okay, the day Adam Dunn's girlfriend, Sarah, fails to return from a Barcelona business trip, his perfect life begins to fall apart. Days later, the arrival of her passport and a note that reads, quote, I'm sorry, S, sets off real alarm bells. He vows to do whatever it takes to find her. Adam is puzzled when he connects Sarah to a cruise ship, a cruise ship called the Celebrate, and to a woman, Estelle, who disappeared from the same ship in eerily similar circumstances almost exactly a year before. To get answers, Adam must confront some difficult truths about his relationship with Sarah. He must do things of which he never thought himself capable, and he must try to outwit a predator who seems to have found the perfect hunting ground. 
If you guys have not yet read a Katherine Ryan Howard book, I highly recommend her. She's great fun. So this is her debut. <laughs> Facts. So I still need to read this, The, La the Liar's Girl, and Rewind. So those are three of her earlier books, which I haven't read yet. I do very much enjoy her. I pre-ordered The Trap, her newest book, which comes out in August. I'm going to do a whole video. So I did wind up shopping through Blackwell's after the whole book depository closing thing. I have a mini book haul from them, but then I pre-ordered a bunch of books that I had pre-ordered through book depository. But I'm so excited to find this. This definitely just feels like feels like a little bit of a gift to have stumbled upon this today. So on that note, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I feel like I probably should give myself a minute to take a breath, which I have not done a great job of taking a breath lately, as you can tell, listening to me talk. And I think I need to tackle that to-do list. So I owe you a writing conversation for anyone who's interested in it. We'll probably do that tomorrow. So I am going to film some videos tomorrow. And then maybe when I kind of check in with you guys tomorrow, we'll do that because I feel like I don't have the, the capacity for it now. But I did read a little bit more of You Shouldn't Have Come Here. No. <laughs> That's Geneva Rose. I didn't do it by Jamie Lynn Hendricks. And I'm still enjoying it. I don't know where we're going. But it is because Murder Palooza is the thriller conference in it, which is based on Thriller Fest. It is making me super bummed to not be going to Thriller Fest again this year. So I just, I can't swing it. So normally I did Craft Fest and Thriller Fest, and then I was volunteering also. And I definitely couldn't do all of it this year. And I just, I just can't swing it. So it hurts my heart. I can, I mean, I could still make a last minute decision. It's the last... It's Memorial Day week, but it's like after Memorial Day happens. So it's in New York City. So it's a train right away from me, which I know I'm very fortunate to have at my disposal. But anyway, I don't think I just don't think it's going to be a thing because it would be a Friday, Saturday for me. So anyway, picking myself up again. All right, let me check out the to do list and I don't know, whatever else happens. I'm totally overdressed, <laughs> but it's cooler, it's breezier, it's more beautiful than yesterday, mostly because the sun is out, so I'm out, here we go, Sunday. Good morning. A more proper check-in because it's easier <laughs> when I'm sitting. There's so many people out this morning, which makes a ton of sense, but it's early, so I wasn't expecting it. But not that it, I mean, belated. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. I made the deliberate choice to start One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle, which is all about this girl who, when the book opens, she is sitting Shiva for her mom and they had made plans to go to Positano together, which is like her mother's favorite place and has all these great memories from when she was younger and spent sort of like this lost summer there before she met her dad and before she met Katie's dad. And she winds up going, Katie is the daughter, winds up going after her mom passes away. And then she winds up, because Rebecca Searle kind of does these magical realism books, She's at the hotel in Positano and she meets her mom when her mom is 30 years old and is having kind of a great summer in Positano. So she gets to have a trip with her mom as her mom's younger self. And it's obviously a lot about grief and loss and love. And it's heavy, which probably makes sense as I'm talking about it, but it's also really good. This is only the second Rebecca Searle book I've read. I read Five Years Later, which I really liked. But one of the reasons why I picked One Italian Summer is because I was going to say Lorelai Gilmore narrates it. Lauren Graham narrates it, who I just absolutely love. So it's really good. It's definitely just tugging on all the emotional heartstrings, which is 
probably a lot for Sunday morning, but it's good. So anyway, that's what I'm listening to. And I am really hungry. <laughs> so I've got to keep walking to go home. But it's such a beautiful morning. I'm so overdressed. I just saw 55 degrees and I like went out on the porch and I was like, ooh, it feels chilly. The fleece was not necessary. But anyway, it's totally fine. So yeah, everything's good. Everything's good. I did some editing last night. Just did some reading. Quiet, perfect. Just like kind of what I needed slash what I wanted. And yeah, today's going to be a good day, I think. So I saw my mom last week. I'm going to see her later this week, which is why I don't have plans today. So yeah, I'm just going to be home. Like I told you guys yesterday, I'm going to try and do some edit or well, I need to edit and also do some filming and eventually maybe have that writer conversation. Can you feel the procrastination pouring off of me? Probably. Yeah, I didn't do anything like that last night. So it's just a struggle. It's just a struggle. It's like anything. Discipline comes and goes and you have to work at it. And I am prioritizing other stuff. It's not like I'm doing nothing. <laughs> excuses, excuses. But I have figured out, not that this was revolutionary information for me, but I am not always specific in my goals. So it's very easy for me to not knock out like bigger things. And it's easier for me to knock out very small stuff in that like, if I just say like, I need to do Instagram content for the week. What I need to do is like, these are the posts I want to do. These are the steps I need to do to make those posts. Like I, I just sort of, I'm not tackling stuff the right way. And part of it is I just feel fuzzy some days. So anyway, all right, I am going to keep on walking so I can get home so I can eat and do all the fun stuff. But such a beautiful morning. I could seriously sit here forever. Although in all fairness, this is one of those like, um, it's not really comfortable on my butt. <laughs> it's not a comfortable bench, so I'm gonna get up. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Sunday afternoon. My day has taken a turn, which happens. So I have been, I'm fine, like it's fine, it's fine. I feel like sometimes I say stuff and it sounds super dramatic. I just got like knocked out with a headache after my beautiful, amazing morning walk. Came home, had breakfast, did the things. I woke up with a headache. I feel like I've talked about, well, I feel like I mentioned the other yesterday. <laughs> I went to go pick up migraine medicine. I've had migraines for a really long time, but the past couple months, they have come back with a vengeance after years of them totally subsiding. So I've never had like super defined triggers to them. But anyway, I just, I took something, it wouldn't go away and it just sort of sidelined me for the morning. So sadly, not my get or done day that I was hoping today was going to be. I did just film some videos, which I'm glad about. Like it's, it's not debilitating today, but it's annoying enough that it's hard to just focus and get stuff done. So anyway, I, it's late in the day too. It's like four o'clock now, right? Four o five. So I read some more of, I didn't do it. I just was filming a book haul, which is why this just conveniently happens to be sitting next to me. So I think I have like 40 or 50 pages left. I'm really enjoying it. It's just fun and campy and there's some mystery and I have some suspicions. I enjoy having suspicions about books and then being wrong about them. And we'll see if I'm right or wrong. I was suspicious of one thing that I, I feel like I had this exact, like deja vu when we were talking about The Perfect Murder by Geneva Rose. I had suspicions about one thing that I wound up being correct and being suspicious of. I have suspicions about something else which is TBD. And then I have questions about something else, which hopefully we will get answers to. So we'll find out, but that's good. So other than that, I wish I had like all sorts of amazing things to report to you guys. I don't, I don't, it's just, it's been that kind of a day. So, and obviously like this takes up a whole chunk of time, but I am going to just try and keep guzzling some water and just try and get a couple chores done that I wanted to get done this morning that I didn't get to, which is always such a bummer. I like going into Monday feeling, and I mean, I got a ton done yesterday, which thank goodness, but I like going into Monday feeling like I have like a clean controlled slate at home. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I have not listened to more of my audiobook, but speaking of my audiobook, oof, these are wedged in tight. I need any more bookshelves. So 
I'm currently reading One Italian Summer. This is such a beautiful cover. The gold. Sucker for a cover. And like I mentioned this morning, like I'm really enjoying it, but it's definitely, as much as it's like light, it's not light. So it's not like easy breezy rom-com that I'm listening to. And I just needed a little bit of a break from it. Not in a, I'm not enjoying this kind of a way, but I wanted to just, I didn't want to be listening to it while my head hurt. And I was just trying to like motor through some other stuff. So anyway, I'm going to take it off the shelf so I can flag some passages in it that I was enjoying while I was listening. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, of course, but I do enjoy Rebecca Searle. I've listened to tons of interviews with her, speaking of like listening to interviews about writing, and I really enjoy her as a creator. So we'll see where this one takes us. But I love the idea of like the mother daughter love story, and I'm just having a good time with it. Plus Lauren Graham, can't go wrong. So. On that note, time to get to get to the getting to, and I'll let you guys know how the day shakes out. Hi everybody, I am just hopping on to wrap up this vlog. I definitely just sort of like gave in to everything last night, and the good news is I finished my book. So I finished Jamie Lynn Hendricks, I didn't do it. By the time you guys see this video, this will be out in the world. So I really enjoyed it, writer's conference, conference <laughs> like writers behaving badly definitely like a little bit of an inside look at the publishing industry a super interesting take slash look at the power of social media and again just somebody gets murdered at a thriller writing conference and a group of thriller writers band together to figure out who done it as people who write who done it's for a living when they themselves find themselves when they themselves find themselves the target of somebody else. <laughs> How's that for <laughs> vague and all that good stuff? But I'm a huge fan of Jamie Lynn Hendricks. This is the second of her books that I've read, and I will be diving into her third book, Finding Tessa, which is her first book, third for me. So very excited about that. And then I am still reading One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle, Lauren Graham, audiobook narrating it, as I had mentioned. This book is definitely heavy, definitely, definitely heavy but it's a mood. It's definitely a mood, but I am enjoying it even though it is, it's a lot. Like it definitely brings up a lot and it is a lot, but I am enjoying it. So stay tuned for my, one of my May wrap ups when I talk about these books in full detail. And for sure, this will be on my Instagram. So if you're not following me there, I'd love to have you follow me there and you can read more about my feelings on this book as well. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out. If you've made it this far, you rock. I realize that this video is crazy long and I just need to stop it here. So I will see you guys in another video really soon. Thanks for being here. I was gonna say this weekend, <laughs> whatever it is you guys are watching it. And I will see you in the next video when that happens. Take care, everybody. Bye.